Well, hello, hello, hello. How are you doing today? Welcome to Wellness by Design. I'm Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer, and I'm passionate about helping people release joint pain naturally by letting go of inflammatory foods, thoughts, and feelings so they can become empowered creators of their own health. So this show is dedicated to helping people achieve wellness, not by reacting to the world around them, but by intentionally designing a life based on what their own body needs. In this show, we explore practices, methods, and science that contribute to optim optimal health. And I'm so excited to have Carrie Rosno here today because she's a girl after my own heart. We love the same things. And I'm just going to read you. Uh, so welcome, Carrie. <laughs> Hello, Jane. <laughs> I'm just going to read Carrie's uh, bio. It's quite interesting. So once a strong and blossoming president and CEO of a multi-million dollar agency, Carrie's survival of the Boston Marathon bombing changed her or challenged her to identify her own limiting beliefs and search for her own voice and truth successfully peeling away years of fear and self-imposed destructive identities. This led to a complete life shift, once, one she does not regret, regret for a second. So now after working with hundreds of individuals such as pro athletes, entrepreneurs, and social influencers, Carrie has perfected a way to destroy institutional thinking and those past traumas that keep people stagnant and longing for more. She does this through a unique combination of transpersonal psychology, epigenetics, and Taoist principles. So Carrie is an intuitive business and global manifestation coach. Carrie, so happy to have you here. Ah, thanks, Jane. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, this is fantastic. I know we're going to dive deep into some great stuff that I've been talking about lately in with my audience, you know, the connection between emotions and illness, mm -hmm. which I know is a real thing. And you know, it's a real thing. <laughs> yes. so let's talk about that. But first of all, a lot of us in this space ended up in this space because of something. And, and I, you know, we talked about it a little bit in that, in your bio there, your experience with the Boston Marathon, but what happened after that, that brought you to this space? So when I, uh, having experienced the Boston Marathon was one thing, the, the real, um, triggering point or shift for me was the day after the marathon when I was down looking at uh, the damage and I had my marathon jacket on and a reporter came up behind me and wanted to ask me a few questions. What was your experience? What did this uh, look like for you? And there was a voice inside my head that said, it's not your story to tell. And I turned my back and I walked away. And that really was such a defining moment for me in how my life had looked up to that point. But then what I I needed to do in order to heal and uh, design the life I wanted moving forward. And that was really in honoring my truth and my experiences and my story through everything that I had been through. So that leads to uh, coming home, uh, immediately going back to work. You kind of get up, you brush it off, and you keep moving on because you want to be strong for other people. And um, within a short amount of time, I went from running marathons to not being able to walk up a flight of stairs unassisted and had multiple illnesses that kind of started to layer on top. And this went on for about a year and a half before I really started to understand and find some diagnoses. And then uh, three years later, before I really understood the mind-body connection and was able to truly overcome all of those things that had um, found their way to me during that time period. Wow. So your feeling is that I guess when, when the reporter asked you this question, you felt like, well, I didn't have an injury from it. Mm -hmm. So therefore my story isn't a story. Yeah. We, you know, we do that so often just in life. When we look at our own experiences, it's this conversation of, um, who am I to have the feelings that surround this? This didn't happen directly to me. It happened to somebody else. This isn't significant enough. I know one of the conversations just internally was around PTSD because we place such a weight on what that is supposed to mean and don't allow it to just be what it is. And so I had um, denied even that truth that I was experiencing and going through that because we kind of reserve things for other 
other people. And when you go back into childhood, you do, it's this mindset of get up and brush it off and keep moving forward. Um, we're wanting to be strong for other people. Uh, don't let them see you sweat, you know, all of those old cliches, but they become a reality as we navigate through different experiences in life. Mm, and they're they they're actually like a subconscious reality. We're not even really aware. Yeah, that is so it. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and all those a lot of those ideas get implanted <laughs> when we're very young, and then they just get settled in there and they stay there, and uh, hard to hard to let them go, especially when you're not aware of them. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's really the challenge. You know, they've scientifically proven we have about sixty thousand thoughts a day. And 85% of those are negative. And we're aware of about 72 in an 18 hour period. So then when you start to like calculate and look back, you go, wow, what all is happening in my mind that I am not aware of? 95% um, of the thoughts are running you from day to day to day. Same thing that happened yesterday is going to happen tomorrow based on the beliefs that you have and the things that are being held in the subconscious mind. I mean, it's just this fascinating um, tool that we have. And when we understand the ability and how to utilize it to our benefit and shift some of those old things out that you know aren't serving us anymore and put something in that's empowering in this moment to help us propel forward i mean that's mm -hmm. just gold yes it is i think people i mean it's astounding when you think about the 95 percent that's the same thoughts day after day so then you keep getting the same thing day after day because that's your programming yeah. i think if people uh, think about like learning to drive a car and how when you first had to learn how to drive a car, there's so much to think about. And then now we, it's automatic, right? You can drive from one place to the next and hardly even remember doing it. So all of these automations and ha it's habits get built, mm -hmm. built in and sometimes they serve us really well and sometimes they don't serve us very well. That is so true. So let's talk a little bit about the connection between emotions then and right. illness because as you said you went through this emotional experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you were perfectly fine before that and then after that you weren't and, and i went through the same sort of thing i was fine before i went through this emotionally charged year and then afterwards i wasn't so i i knew that it was a connection and it sounds like you equally knew it was a connection which in some ways makes it easier for us to say okay Let's get to the bottom of this because I know it's an emotional thing. Mm. You know, for me at first, I didn't realize it was an emotional thing. Um, and that's because I did. Uh, I didn't acknowledge the PTSD that I was going through. Um, you know, it's an interesting word you use in there before I was fine. And then after things shifted, you know, when I work with clients and I say, how are things going? And they go fine. I'm like, mm, OK, so yeah. what's happening? Right. Because fine is not and it's just not a good word to, to use if things are fine. And no. when I look at my life prior to um, Boston, I, yes, I felt like um, I, you know, had checked all the boxes. I did all the things. I owned a company. I ran marathons. I, um, you know, had the kids and the house in the suburbs and all of those things. Yet there was still questioning within me. <clears throat> there was still mm -hmm. this, you know, is this really it? Is this everything I'm supposed to be doing? But I never asked those questions out loud and I never allowed that to permeate too deeply. So I would almost guarantee that if people really sat back and looked at their lives and allowed themselves to ask the questions um, that they hide and to really sit deep in and understand every aspect, then there are definitely limiting things that are starting to fill that bucket up you just yeah. haven't had the thing that overflows it. And so where I like to dive in is go, okay, do we want to wait till that bucket overflows? Because that's what happened in my situation, right? You have this lifetime of experiences and things that you've been through this buildup. And Boston was just the thing that overflowed my bucket. It wasn't the thing. And so to acknowledge all of the experiences and everything that we're navigating in life so that we don't have to hit that point. Mm. Right? <laughs> So beautiful because I agree that it's a it's a tipping point. It's yeah. that bucket, you know, it gets filled, 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 filled. We don't even realize it, mm -hmm. and boom, you have this event <laughs> that causes it causes it to tip over and mm -hmm. and then spill out. So I'm the same way. I look back. I said fine, but I yeah. look back and realized 
Well, mm, there was a lot going on internally that <laughs> really wasn't that fine. Mm -hmm. And um, I know f when I look back on it, for me, I see that there was like perfectionist tendencies, always feeling um, this feeling of not being good enough, having to do more. I'm not doing enough and mm -hmm. trying to do it all for everyone. Like to me, those are, are now I see them as signs mm -hmm. that everything wasn't fine. Right. Uh, what, what kinds of signs do you see? Oh, goodness. When I look back, it's um, anything that I, okay, let me put it this way. When I look at life, we are creating everything. So we talk about manifesting, we talk about vision boards, we talk about the things that we want and we desire in our life. Well, we're creating everything. So not just the things that we want and desire, do we have the ability to pull into our lives, but all of the things that aren't exactly what we want them to be, we've also pulled that into our lives. And so when I go back and I look, I think, well, my relationship, my marriage was not healthy. Um, it wasn't where I wanted my marriage to be. Um, I questioned a lot of the um, institutional thinking that surrounded me, but I never voiced that. It was always something that I kind of held back in. Um, perfectionism, of course, having to you know prove myself, always worried about what other people were going to think, right? If I make this decision, how is it going to affect all of these other people? And even in my business, I mean, I navigated a very... Um, um, dysfunctional relationship with an executive in my company because I was worried about what other people would think, right? The things that we'll put ourselves through in honor of other people, we've yeah. got to start shifting that. It's got to be in honor of you. And so if there's any place in your life where you're not honoring yourself, but you're honoring other people first, that's a signal to you. That's yeah. telling you that there's something, right? That bucket's filling up. And yeah. so we need to start addressing that. Yeah. Do you find that people sometimes have blind spots and they can't even really e even see that, that they're doing that? Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we feel like it's in one area of our life. I just, I have this one thing with this one person, right? This person irritates me or upsets me or treats me in this negative way. And I go, okay, but if it's happening there, I will guarantee you it's happening everywhere in your life. It just looks a little bit different. Yeah. Right. Or, or it can happen over and over again. Well, you don't see that person anymore, but then another person comes along. <laughs> then you have the question, why do I keep getting myself in the same relationship? Why yeah. do I keep right having the same conversation over and over and over again? That's the subconscious yeah. mind that's running the program that's out of habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carrie, you mentioned in institutional thinking. Mm -hmm. So what's a what's what do you mean by institutional thinking? Uh, for me, it's all of the conscious, like the collective belief systems. It's all of the teachings that we are, um, taught throughout life. This is how, um, women are to behave. This is what, uh, you know, the role of women is, this is what the role of men is. This is, um, you know, what a marriage is supposed to look like, supposed to look like, you know, all of those things that we have been taught, um, throughout life from different institutions, different, um, uh, places, whether it be church or school or, um, you know, the office, the corporate world, all of those different things, we've got to start stripping that away because that's where we can fall into this idea of, I I should be, or I should be doing. Um, I'm not at home, you know, making my kids dinner every night. And so I've got to feel guilty about that. Um, that's what I consider institutional thinking. At okay. the end of the day, the life that you design needs to be the life that you desire. And you have complete ability to make choice. And we don't realize that we can get stuck in these um, mindsets or in uh, these paradigms of, I don't have the ability to make a choice. I made this choice once and I can't, I can't shift it. I've made a commitment. I've, um, you know, made a promise and I can't shift myself out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women, um, especially single women or, or even men for this matter mm -hmm. may feel that they're stuck in a job, for example, that mm -hmm. is making them unhappy mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, it maybe it's not making them unhappy, but they're not feeling fulfilled and they yeah. feel like they don't have a choice. What That's kind true. of things do you suggest for that? 
Well, I think the first thing that collectively in all situations we really need to understand is that we have value. We have value and we have worth. We are significant and we are important. And that what we desire is something that we can have, that we don't need to feel guilty or shameful for wanting something different or wanting something more. Um, anytime the conversation comes up, well, isn't that the way it should be? Doesn't everybody think that way? Doesn't everybody get themselves in a position or a career that they're not happy with? Um, the answer is no, always. If that question ever comes up, the answer is always no. You get to design and do whatever you want, but you have to understand that you have value and you have to trust yourself. You have to trust the decisions that you made, but and make, but we've been, you know, filled a lifetime of experiences where now hindsight, we look back and go, oh, what a stupid thing to do. I can't believe I did that. And in that moment, all of a sudden we decide um, that we can't trust our decisions. And so mm -hmm. we'll end up staying in a position that's unhealthy or unfulfilling because we are just too afraid to make a different decision and move forward. Yeah, and we, mm -hmm. it's part of that, uh, the industrial uh, industrial thinking that you're talking about too, that we're, and maybe, and it's even built into our our primitive brains to avoid anything that's fearful. Mm, and so right. we stay stuck in the known, even if we're not, it, it, even if we're not fully fulfilled, it's known mm -hmm. and safe mm -hmm. rather than venturing out into something that may not be safe. Uh, but as you said, we always have a choice. We always have a choice. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful thing. It and, is. and the whole, um, you talked about wanting more or wanting to be happy or those kinds of things. That That is actually part of who we are. It's part of our mm -hmm. spirit, I believe, that to be, to want more, to want abundance, to want to be happy. And it's really our birthright to go after that. And it's our birthright to have it. Yes. We get to have the abundance. Yeah. Um, you know, when you think about all of the things that uh, we desire, there's a reason why there's a desire there. The, you know, if you look at that basic foundational element of love, people want love. They desire love. I want to be seen and I, I want to be loved. There's a reason why that's there. Right? Yeah. Because that gives us the ability to thrive and to move forward in life. Well, mm -hmm abundance in all things gives us the opportunity and the ability to do that as well. And to know that we are worthy of that and it is safe for us to want it. And mm -hmm. it's not, um, it's, uh, not to be shameful of. Mm -hmm. Yes. I couldn't agree with you more. So let's, let's get back to the health side of things. So, cause that's what we're talking about here. How do you help people overcome these emotional challenges that are causing a physical manifestation of disease in their body. Mm -hmm. So it's um, really kind of a three-step process. Uh, one is we've got to get really um, present and really settled within ourselves um, in order to allow what I call gaps in thoughts to come forward so that we have the ability to truly see what's happening. Um, we spend so much time in a fight or flight state. And when you are in a fight or flight state, your mind does not process information the way that you truly desire it to, right? Because blood flow shifts and um, it kind of shuts down that problem solver because I don't need that in the moment. I just need to fight or flight. Um, if you can get yourself into a present state, you immediately calm that nervous system and you immediately settle everything that's happening within the body in order to bring forward truth that sits within you. The hardest thing for people to grasp when we start talking about these things is the fact that we have created everything in our lives for a purpose. There is a reason that everything has occurred. Um, the example I've been giving lately is the child who puts his hand on a hot stove. As a parent, you sit back and you're like, don't put your hand on that stove, it's hot. And they put the hand on the stove and you're like, but I told you not to do it, right? I hope you learned your lesson. So it's fine. I hope you learned your lesson. And then the next time you walk over, the child puts his hand on the hot stove again. And you're thinking, why do you keep doing that? I've told you it's hot. You've placed your hand on it, but something hasn't clicked. Something hasn't like settled in to say, oh, every time I touch that, 
it's going to be hot. And as soon as the child learns that, he stops putting his hand on the hot stove, right? It's the same thing with the relationships I continue having or the illnesses that keep coming forward. There's mm -hmm. something deeper that needs to be um, addressed and that needs to be discovered in order to understand why you have that illness. Not everybody gets a cold. Not everybody gets, you know, the types of illnesses that come forward. Epstein-Barr for me, for instance, was one that kind of manifested itself in me. Um, so many people walk around with that right? But it doesn't manifest itself in everybody. And the reason why is because of the, I call it the energy that I was holding on to, the emotions that I was holding on to, the things that were getting stuck in my body allowed that to come forward. When I found those emotions and I addressed them by mm -hmm. getting quiet, allowing gaps in thought and getting super curious, mm -hmm. right? Having an awareness and getting really really curious, um, insatiably curious, I call it, to sit back and go, okay, why is this here? What is happening? Um, when did it start? Uh, what was happening in my life? We've got to start looking at life as a whole, the way that we really desire to look at health as a whole, not looking at symptoms of, but getting to the crux and down to the source. And that's what we do when we sit and we look at all of life and we say, okay, so this experience was happening happening. This is about the time it came up. Uh, what was I feeling? What was I experiencing? And then the other key is, how is it serving me? You know, for me, it took a long time to get over those illnesses because it was serving me. And when I say serving me, people are like, this is doing nothing for me, right? This is doing nothing. Okay. I was a CEO and an owner of a multimillion dollar company that worked all the time. I would wake up in the morning, I would go to work, I'd do my thing, I ran at 4.30 every morning, and then I would collapse in bed at 9.30, 10 o'clock every night. So one of the things that illness helped me to do was to rest. Right. Right? So when you start looking at, okay, so what are the things that have shifted since I became ill? Did, did my family get closer? Right? Did my kids come home? Uh, would I, did I have downtime? Was I able to rest? Did my husband's behavior shift because he needed to take care of me? You've got to look at all of those different elements and just get super curious about it. Mm. So uh, create gaps. Mm -hmm. Have an awareness, awareness yes. and ask questions. And get super curious. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Love that. A lot of people don't think about that with an illness. Like, what am I getting out of it? No. But, and like you said, it may not be conscious. The fact that rest thing might be, well, I don't want to be resting all the time. I want to be doing all those things. So I don't see that as a benefit, but for your body, it's a benefit. For your body, it's a benefit. Absolutely yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think the thing with, you know, the having a hard time creating awareness and understanding that emotions have something to do with illness or that you potentially could have something to do with the illness that you're holding on to is this mindset of it's either happening to me or it's happening for me. Mm -hmm. And in either situation, that means somebody else is responsible. Something else is responsible. Um, I'm being punished. I'm being judged. You know, I, I didn't do good things in my life or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's either happening to you or it's happening for you, which is the positive flip for that. Right. Yeah. So in that, then I've always got to look outside for answers. I've always got to understand, why did you do this to me? Why did you do this for me? If you're asking that question, why it's never going to be satisfied, where if you can sit and understand and go, okay, so if I brought this in, if I created this, if I stepped into this relationship because it's serving me in some way, why would I do that? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Interesting. So taking this ownership. And I think that's the other key to it. You've really got to start taking ownership yeah. over your own life. Yeah. Yeah. I think in all areas of life, whether we're talking about an illness or whether we're talking about personal development or anything, taking responsibility is mm -hmm. the first step, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is hard for people to, to take, especially with an illness. Like I'm not taking responsibility for this. But when you when you do look at that emotional side, you mm -hmm. have to take some responsibility. Absolutely. Even if you've been acting, uh, you know, unconsciously and it's things in your subconscious mind, you, once you know about that, you have a responsibility or it is your responsibility to do something about it if you choose to. Absolutely. Right? 
Absolutely. But you can choose not to, but that's still your responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got a question that I ask all my guests, and I'm just going to put it up on the screen there. So what is one action someone could take today to improve their health? So just general, but it has to be today. Ah, uh, today? Oh yeah. my goodness. I can I give them two? <laughs> sure. Sure. This, sure. Is a, this is a twofold. One is to create gaps in your thoughts. And when yeah. I say create gaps in your thoughts, what I truly mean by that is to get in a present state. A lot of people will utilize meditation for this. I tried meditation. I'm not a, I can sit down for 20 or 30 minutes and get quiet and still and because I've got stuff to do, right? So I'm very intentional in all of my activities. So I sit down and I take a few deep breaths and I focus on those breaths. Okay. And you want to get into a present state because when you do that, when you focus on something like your breath, your mind kind of shuts down and all of a sudden it's blank for a moment. That's what I mean by creating a gap. You want that blank space. When you do that, then ask a question, right? Because intuition, everybody has it. You go to a movie or you're talking with a girlfriend. Do you remember that actor in this movie? You're, oh, what was the name? Oh my gosh, I can't think of that. And then you walk away and all of a sudden it hits you, right? That's intuition. That's creating a gap in thought. And if we can do that to understand or to find an actor in a movie, why can't we do that to find the truth that sits within us, right? So we create a gap, we ask a question, we get aware, and we just allow and accept anything that comes up anything without judgment, without bias, which is one of the hardest things for us to do and get curious about it. Mm. So create the gap in the thought and ask a question is the first thing that I would say to do. Just start getting curious about yourself. Love it. Do you encourage people to write down their question? They and can write down the, their answer. They can. Absolutely. Um, so if you're sitting in kind of that present state, if you've got some questions, you can write them down. Another thing you can do, because I've, you know, once you practice this and um, like I work with people to really hone this skill in, you can write the question down before you go to bed and then uh -huh. fall asleep and see, because sometimes that'll come through to you uh, during your sleep. So it's just getting that empty space, right? And ask the question and then whatever comes up, you honor it. You're not making it up. I will tell you that right now, you are not making it up. You are not imagining it. That is just how your body, that intuition, that deepest sense of self and what I call the collectiveness of the universe, that energy that runs in everything, it's that's just how it's showing you. So honor it. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Carrie, this has been fantastic. So um, tell me where people can find you. I'll, I'll, I, I think I got some links there already to your yeah. website and on Instagram and Facebook. But I know you've got a little a couple of gifts that you want to give away to the audience. So do you want to explain those? Yeah, yeah. So I actually have the one right now. Another one's going to be coming out a little in uh, the next couple of weeks. My team okay. and I have put together. But uh, so one is I do have a 15 minute meditation that is a guided intentional meditation to really help you open up to what could potentially be getting in the way of you receiving everything that you want. If you want health, and you don't have it right now, it's because something's getting in the way. So this guided meditation kind of helps you discover and ask questions around what that could potentially be. Uh, so that we will have a link to. And then the second thing that we are finishing out is a self-worth assessment. So if there's anything that is going to get in the way of you understanding your truest desires, of you finding that truth that sits within and releasing those limiting beliefs, it is going to be understanding your self-worth. And so we put together a self-worth assessment to really start those wheels turning, um, to give, you know, some ideas, some questions. Uh, it's got a scale for you to rank these different areas that will start to bring forward to you some of the things that could be getting in the way as well. Love that. Yeah, because it starts with self-worth. This has been fantastic. So thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you to all of the people that are joining in live and also joining in on the replay. Uh, this has just been really interesting, really informative, really, really in my wheelhouse of this, the emotional connection to illness, because it's, it's a missing link, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, really needs to be addressed. So thank you so much, Carrie. Thanks, Jane. This has been amazing. Okay, bye.